Welcome back, folks, to Scripting for Linguists. I am your host, Earl Kara Brown. In this episode, I have this question for us. Has Julia gotten faster with recent major releases? In a previous video linked to above and below, I asked this question um, about um, Python. And I saw that Python has gotten quicker from Python 3.8 up to Python 3.12. It got quicker, especially between Python 3.9 and 3.10. So I had the same question, a great follow-up question, right? Has Julia, the Julia language, gotten quicker? And that is the purpose of this video. In another previous video linked to above, as well as below, I um, pitted Julia against Python when trying to find the collocates of a node word. The collocates are neighboring words. A node word is the word that a user of the script specifies. And I found in that video that Python was quicker than Julia, but I mentioned that video because I'm gonna use that same script with five different versions of Julia. I have Julia version 1.7.0, Julia 1.8.0, 1.9.0, 1.10.0, and then at the time of recording this video, the there's a pre-release version of Julia 1.11.0. I'm using alpha two of Julia 1.11.0. So I have those five versions, and I am going to run that very same script from that previous video. <clears throat> and again, just to refresh our memory a bit, I have a function that gets the file names in a directory, does a little bit of walking, walking down the directory. I have another function that takes one file name and gets the frequencies of all the words and the frequencies of the collocates. Collocates, again, are words that are near a word that the user specifies. In this case, I'm using a span of five or a window of five to the left and five to the right. So a 10 word window right around uh, the node word or the word that the user specifies. And then here's a little, another helper function to flatten all those dictionaries from each file. And then I'm using the log dice metric, which is a popular one for word associations um, to see how strong, how strongly two words are attracted to each other or associated with each other. And then here's another helper function to make the actual data frame that gets returned. And this is um, a function to loop over uh, to get the file names and then to, um, it's, I have it written here to do parallel processing, but I'm not gonna do parallel processing here. We're just gonna do um, sequential or serial processing here, with just one thread. Anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna use um, the Spotify, Spotify podcast data set, about a fourth of it, 230 million words of that corpus to get the collocates of the node word episode. Now, um, yeah, so I'm expecting to see things like welcome, being within five words often of the word episode, last, as in like the last episode, or miss, like if you missed the previous episode, that type of thing. Um, and then I'm gonna do 10 iterations or 10 trials for each version, each of those five versions of Julia, and just keep track of those, the speed, uh, how many seconds it takes to do those, to do um, this script here. And so I have already done this actually before I started the video. I did that and put the results out to a CSV file and use my old friend R, the R programming language, to um, plot this up in a little box plot. So let's take a look at our box plot. Uh, it's kind of small, but the far left one is uh, 170, 180, 190, 110, and then like I said uh, at the time recording, the the most current, I mean, the there's a pre-release version of 111.0 I have right there, alpha 2. And so what do we see? There's a kind of an overall trend. The, I don't know if you, to, if you don't know how to read box plots, the, the box is representing the middle 50% of the data points. I actually went ahead and plotted each run with a little bit of jitter, that is a little bit of random noise, um, just so you can see where the, the points are, um, the actual runs. These, these dots are the actual runs, and then the box plot gives you the middle 50%. The horizontal line within the box plot gives you the median or the middle uh, number. Anyway, so if we look at this, there is a general trend from 170 to 1110 of going down from left to right, right? Meaning that it's getting quicker, the duration is getting shorter. Aside from 110, that right there is an outlier. I'm not totally sure what happened with 110. Um, 
I do remember reading somewhere on some blog or maybe the release notes uh, from the Julia creators that when the LLM compiler would change, they would have to work to scramble to try and uh, recoup, recoup the, uh, the speed that they um, had lost because of the change with the LLM compiler. And so I'm not sure if what's happening there with 110.0. Uh, perhaps in a future video, I'll look at each minor release within each of these uh, each of these major releases to see if there's some some pattern we can see. But yeah, I guess overall we're seeing a, a quicker, that Julia is getting quicker from at least across these last five major releases. Again, this is using about 230 million words across almost 40,000 files. On my little laptop here, it's a MacBook Pro, 16 gigabytes of memory using a, a Apple M1 chip. So we can answer our question this way, has Julia gotten faster with major releases? Yes, generally, but there's that one outlier with 110.0, and I'm not totally sure at the moment why that was the case. But the overall trend seemed to be, yeah, it's getting quicker. So good job, Julia people uh, who are creating Julia. There you go. That is this video. Thanks for joining. See you next time.